This is Laborts and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. Papa Laborts starts with the wings. I use the airbrush with one part paint, one part thinner consistency. You can use water or thinner, it works either way. I use water all the time if I'm not trying to airbrush like uh, close to white colors. Cover all the surface of the wings because this purple will act as our darkest shadow for them. I'm using the painted version of the miniature I found on the Kickstarter page as a reference. Next, I try to leave just a little bit of that purple close to the part where the wings connect to the body. I'm using the same consistency as in the previous step and it will be the same for the whole tutorial. This diluted paint consistency helps achieving a smooth transition and you won't see any spotty finish which can be caused by a thicker consistency and a low air pressure. Now with a higher value blue, I move the highlights toward the end of the wings. I use some flow improver because colors that are close to white in value usually dry faster and to avoid a quick tip dry, this will help me a bit. I'm applying the paint with small bursts with a gentle trigger control. As Engel Giraldes would say, poco poco and Papa Labort is all about poco trigger control. Try to reach maximum opacity by applying multiple thin layers and make sure some of your previous layers stays visible. I painted black all the parts that had some overspraying. So if you are a big fan of extra definition and uh, cleanliness, you can do the same. Let's continue with the face. I cover the visible parts using Galvor Pack Red. This is a nice color for some old rotten meat and the burgundy tones are always great for shadows. After that I cover the eyeball with ice yellow. Papa Labors concentrates so hard that even the paint is making some nervous bubbles. It's the same like Granny's mouth when she's having a seizure. Ok, so back to the skin. Try to follow the wrinkles around the flesh parts with a mix of Galvor back red and Cadian flesh tone. Cover the eyelids, but make sure you have a thin black line between the eye and the eyelids. Yeah, no guys, it's pretty tiny and these details are hard to see, but Papa Labors believes in you. Now, let's push the contrast with Cadian flesh very tiny areas and use it more over the right side of the face since the left is uh, blocked anyway. Let's paint the teeth with pure ice yellow. Of course any off-white of your choice could work but more greyish tones could appear like the teeth are too clean for a zombie in my opinion. As you see I mimic a vertical movement with my brush before applying the paint. This way I can make the smallest movement uh, possible because you guessed it, I can't see those teeth so I'm just trying to guess where they are and where my brush's tip would reach them. After that I glaze over the eyeball with uh, two to three layers of fluorescent orange to have a faint glowy eye look like I did in the Deadpool tutorial. Remember guys the Deadpool tutorial? That was a good one right? Please watch all my videos and leave a like, thank you. So for the most of the suit I used dark sea blue. Since the suit is black we need to choose a very dark and very desaturated color to paint a nice black suit. I choose dark sea blue which is a very dark green. It's very similar to Incubi Darkness on the Citadel range. We need to leave around 50% of the surface black so when we start to highlight the suit more it will read as black and not as grey like uh, Granny's armpit hair. Ok, the challenging part is uh, the primer I used has a satin finish and it makes it hard to see which parts are highlighted already or have some wet paint over it. So either glaze over the whole suit with a very diluted consistency on all the black parts so the paint creates a matte finish or just use a matte varnish. Next I reduce the highlight areas by mixing a little bit of blue horror to the dark sea blue. Since we use this color on the wings why not use it on the suit as well to push the contrast. We don't need much of this layer. If you guys over highlight the suit and you will send me some pictures of your desaturated blue wasp minis I will slap on your tiny hands ok? Let's avoid that by following a simple rule. Only cover 70% of the previous dark sea blue layer. Not the black but the dark sea blue ok? Yeah Papa Labors but we just glazed over everything with dark sea blue so everything has dark sea blue on it. Ok so only cover 70% of the fully opaque dark sea blue parts. Add a bit more blue horror to the dark sea blue and reduce the highlight areas. Since the highlights are getting smaller and smaller we need to follow the shapes with our brush strokes. So if you look carefully on the leg there are some lines that follow the shapes of the muscles. On the helmet I start to pick out the edges of the metal parts. On the breasts I found that the highlight I created was too big 
So I went back with the dark sea blue and reduced the size of the highlight. It's not easy to paint black and less is more when it comes to the highlights. Cover all the yellow parts with Tondia Brown. This will act as a shadow color for our uh, yellow stripes and wings. After that, cover 90% of the yellow parts with a mix of Tondia Brown and Hopgrot Hide. Use thin layers to blend in the color easily. Don't use super thin consistency, because you don't want to know what will happen to your tiny hands if the paint gets on the wings. Ok? Papa Laborz is watching you. Remove the excess paint on a paper towel if your paint is a bit too runny and uh, you'll be fine. Cover the lens on the mask with this color too. Let's mix a bit of Everland Sunset to the previous mixture and reduce the highlight areas a bit more. Apply multiple thin layers to make it smooth like Granny's butt cheek. That's probably the most time consuming part, so make sure you don't rush it. Guys, painting to a relatively high standard is time consuming. So don't expect wonderful results like in 20 minutes, ok? Maybe you guys know this, uh, maybe you don't, but these paint jobs take a lot of time. But if you enjoy painting, then it would worth to put some hours into a single minute. For the glint on the visor I used Averland Sunset mixed with Ice Yellow. In a 1 to 1 ratio, make a small dot in the corner of the eye and one larger and one smaller next to each other on the other side. Wow, Papa Lavorts, we're looking at a single picture and you give some easy to follow instructions. If only I could have this for other minis as well. Funny that you mention it. Papa Lavorts has a growing collection of PDF guides on his Patreon page. Some of the Marvel Zombies characters will be featured in those guides, so if you are interested, head over to Patreon. Then I mix some Averland Sunset and Ice Yellow to do some edge highlights on the wings and on the stripes. On the top of the wings I use pure Ice Yellow to have more contrast. For the base, cover everything with Dark Sea Blue. After that I use Neutral Grey. You can absolutely use the same colors for these metal machinery bits that we used for the suit, but I wanted to have a slightly different tone for them. Neutral grey doesn't have any hue to it, because it's just black mixed with white. So it will look a bit different than the suit's bluish hues. I won't blend these parts to have a smooth surface. I try to add texture with the brush strokes to create a more weathered look. Continue the process with light grey. Remember the rules of highlighting different easy shapes. If it's a flat square, then highlight it with a gradient. If it's a cylinder, emphasize the shape with square shaped highlights. I paint all this while leaving a rough texture, so the weathering can be consistent all over the highlights. Edge highlight all the edges where you can and use the side of your brush's tip to do that. And a thicker consistency with the paint. For maximum highlights, I mixed some silver grey to the light grey and highlighted the top part of the machine. Edge highlighted a bit more to add some extra detail. The OSL effect is a Patreon exclusive. If you like to access to that part of the video, you can find the link in the video description. I thought the yellow parts could be a bit more yellow, so I glazed over some area yellow over the mid-tones next to the highlights. Just a few thin layers can really make a difference and make those parts more nice and saturated. For the copper parts of the base, I mixed some Tondia Brown with Cadian Flash and uh, created some highlights following the weathered approach, like uh, on the grey parts. With pure KDM flash, I made some edge highlights on these flat square shapes. Lastly, I did some weathering all over the mini with a mix of Word Barrel's Red and Tondia Brown, because when it comes to zombies, the dashier, the better. I try to imitate small little splashes of blood that uh, already dried up. To imitate this splatter effect, you can look at some uh, pictures online for reference, but mainly you have a big splash on the middle and uh, smaller dots around them. If the splash has some more uh, fluids to it, it should flow where the gravity would pull the liquid anyway. So like in a straight line, or, or more like in a dashed line. So thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. A huge thanks to my Patreons who support this kind of videos. 
with special shout out to Jonathan Rhodes, Coldblooded Dom, Trying to Pain Minis, Jonathan Mosner, Vlad D, One Sharp Joe Crafts, Glitchy Macrash, Guillaume Belanger. If you like to support the work of Papa Laborts, you can do that on Patreon. You will have access to exclusive content, PDF guides, you can vote on the next mini, or if you need a little bit of extra help, online coaching is also available. I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a Granny's budget.